Well, I feel like I slept better than I expected to. This tent is, uh, it's nice and long. I like how long it is. Had plenty of foot room and head room. Yeah, didn't bring anything for breakfast, so. I think I'm just gonna get packed and we'll head out of here. So in that last video I did, I did like a gear overview and talked about what all my gear is. It actually looks like I have much less right now, and I don't know why. But oh, probably because that bag is packed. The cooking stuff and the fire stuff is packed. Anyway, people were asking me, how do you put it on the bike? So I don't know why I overlooked that, but um, I thought today I'd kind of go over that as I was putting this stuff back. So yeah, I don't know if I really done a video on this um, but I have this bag here for all my camera gear inside here is my DSLR my GoPro that's on my head right now and then a whole bunch of batteries and SD cards this is only and then these are sunglasses but it's only for camera stuff then I've got these Wolfman Enduro bags and you can see they just attach to both sides here and uh, each one has specific things that I put in it. And then here in the back, I just have this Wolfman waterproof duffel bag and it has certain things I put in that. So let's start packing these and I'll just show you where everything goes. So if I bring a gun, the gun usually goes into this bag and then I take a Nalgene bottle and I put that in there with it. In this other saddlebag, I pretty much permanently keep some foil and some skewers in here in case I'm camping and I forget to bring certain utensils to cook vegetables. I can do it using that. I also have, I forgot I had this, a cramp buster in here. If you guys don't know what a cramp buster is, it's a little thing that clips onto your hand grip here. And the idea is if you're riding long distance and your fingers get tired of gripping, you can put this on here as sort of like a palm support. So you can release your fingers and you can drive with just your palm. I almost never use it anymore. Because um, I forgot I had it. But I just, I don't know, I think I just got used to, <clears throat> got used to my fingers being tired. I don't know. But... Two Nalgene's go into this bag. And I like these containers because they're robust. You know, if I drop my bike, these aren't really going to break. And if they do, it's not that big of a deal to replace one, you know. So also in this bag, I put this little bendy tripod thing. But I got to take the cell phone mount off of it. So I usually do like that. And then shove it in wherever it'll fit and that's about it for that bag the bend little cell phone mount goes back in my camera bag and next we go into the duffel oh my book or my reading material if it's a small enough book um, it goes in here with this with the gun the other now, Jane. So now that bag is uh is packed. And this bag is packed. Put the clips on. Now we'll go in here. In here I've got some extra clothes already and I've got some of my food scraps and I've got another rag. I'll just leave that stuff where it's at. First thing I like to put in is my tent and the stakes because it takes up the most space usually. So I 
Or like you just get it in there. It's a lot easier actually if you take this bag off and put it on the ground, but once it's on the motorcycle, I don't really usually take it off. Cups, my fire stuff, and my uh, my flashlights are next. Just try to put everything in here in a way where it's not going to move around a lot. This is actually my flashlight. I keep it rolled up in this beanie so it doesn't get smashed so much. And then my flask and my uh, cutting boards. And next I gotta put this power station in there. But I'm wearing the hoodie that I roll it up in. <laughs> also, if that coupon code for Inkeo is still valid, I'll put that in the description. But otherwise, I will put the link to that in the description if any of you guys want to get one. It's a super handy tool, man. I charged up my GoPro last night. To be honest, I forgot my phone cable, so I couldn't charge my phone. Because uh, I'm a dummy. But I could have charged my phone and a GoPro. And remember, if you want to win this thing, all you got to do is pledge a dollar a month on my Patreon and you will uh, you will be entered automatically into this giveaway and future giveaways. So I roll that up like that just to keep it safe. Find a spot for it. And then I think that's it. Oh, I forgot the pad. Damn. Alright, so this is what the first stage usually looks like. Sleeping pad and tent. I forgot the sleeping pad. And then, roll this bad boy up. Which again, is a lot easier to do if you're on the ground. So now the, uh, the two saddlebags are packed, the duffel's packed. It needs to be tightened down more. Next is my sleeping bag and then my, my slider and the, these two things which are I brought for the tent because you need trekking poles to set up that tent. But I can show you how I package that. <clears throat> so the bag usually goes right here and then uh, I don't remember where I bought this thing. I think I got it from REI of all places. And it was actually like a bicycle luggage carrier. <clears throat> but it's a little cargo net with little hooks on it. And what I do is stick that onto the rack. You can do this on any luggage rack. And then stretch it around everything. Clip it to the back of the rack. And now, got my hand stuck. Now you're good to go. This net is extremely handy. And then you can stuff things under the net if you want to, which is what I'm going to demonstrate here. So the slider usually just gets shoved in between here, like this. I've never had a problem with it falling out. You could shove anything in here though. And now, for these guys. Loop these under a couple of these buckles just as extra support. And on the end here, I take the net and I shove it through the net. That way if it starts to slide, the net stops it. That's pretty secure, and obviously, point those backwards. Come on, your back is right here. <laughs> I did realize I forgot to put this in. Normally this goes into the duffel bag, but I'll just shove it under the cargo net and we'll be on our way. 
Need a new ground cloth. This thing is like so dirty. It's even got paint on it. I don't even know how that happened. Just shove that bad boy there. And uh, that's it. Pretty much good to go. So I'm gonna probably title this video, uh, I don't know, how I, how I pack my, uh, my motorcycle for camping or something like that. And uh, if that's what you came for, you guys can leave now. <laughs> or you can stay for this vlog portion as I talk to myself on my way out of here. <clears throat> um, so last night I was laying in my, my tent trying to go to sleep and I heard tires like rolling around on this, on this gravel here really slowly. And that noise is unmistakable. No animal makes that noise. I was like, that is a car. Looked at my watch. It was 12 in the morning. It was 12. It was midnight. I'm like, who's rolling in here at midnight? <clears throat> and that's a situation where, uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm happy that I have a gun. You know, it's not that the person had bad intentions, but it's that I didn't know what their intentions were. You know, if you're rolling in here late to go camping, you'd be quiet. But if you were rolling in here to, to pick a fight, you'd also be probably quiet. I mean, I ended up staying up for an hour trying to watch them figure out what they were doing. I know they didn't know I was there. And uh, I heard their car honk and I heard some car doors. And I, I think they were just camping for the night. Oh, here's some cows. Or bull. Steer. Whatever you want to call them. Oh my god. The guy, this guy left the gate open. Can you believe that? Where is neutral? This motorcycle always has a problem finding neutral. I can't believe they left the gate open. It clearly says close the gate. Sometimes with signs like this, I wonder, like, why they don't just say why. Like, hey, close the gate so my cows don't get out. You know? Then we'd all know. We would all know to close the gate. It was probably just some guy thinking it didn't matter. You know? Ridiculous. Well, anyway, as I was saying, I think he just came in to, to sleep and he was camping. He just showed up to camp late. I think is what it was. But <clears throat> I didn't know. You know, for all I knew, he could have been walking around drunk on drugs. I ran into a crazy guy once. I ran into a guy that thought the government was after him and uh, he was he was pretty threatened by me at first but um, I'm not going to say I talked him out of it because I don't think I did. I think he just decided that I was a nice guy and that I wasn't from the government and there's a video of that if you guys want to see it. It's called Crazy Guy in the Woods but my point is, on, on land like this, you're out of cell range usually. I happen to have cell service today, but usually you're out of cell range. Certainly nowhere near help, you know? And you gotta make a decision on whether or not you wanna carry something that you could defend yourself with. You know, it's not that there's bandits out here, because that's not the case. It's just the unknown. And that's why I carry a gun. This is way steeper than it looks. See, if I was that guy, though, I would have camped right here. Like, why not just park your car where it's easiest and, and do that? So anyway, uh, I just wanted to tell that story because, like, um, I, I do this a lot. You know, I've gone on a lot of camping trips now just from these videos. And I've experienced some things at night. Never had somebody really roll up on me. If had animals run into this campsite and make a lot of noise, I had an elk do that. And, you know, I've heard cars coming by and you just really never know. And I'm out here, by my lonesome. So it's not that I would shoot somebody, that's not it. It's that if somebody came up to the campsite, you have to, I would want to show some authority, if that makes sense. Like you don't roll up on me at midnight in the middle of nowhere without getting a talking to. Happened to have an extremely high power flashlight that my brother-in-law bought me that could shine on mountains. If you focus the beam, it's insane. So I figured if something like that happened, I'd just shine the light in their eyes and I'd ask them what they're doing there. 
And then when they said they're just looking for a place to camp, I'd say, okie doke, you want any water? I got water, I got snacks, you know where I'm at if you need anything. And then I'd be a nice guy. But if they are like making up stories and they smell like meth or something, I'm gonna have to ask them to leave. So that's that. <laughs> well, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, remember to click like if you liked the video. Remember to subscribe if you want to see more of it. And if you want to be alerted when these videos come out, you can click the bell icon at the bottom right side of the video. Also remember I have a Patreon page and there's a lot of cool rewards on there and uh, trying to really give people their money's worth. And if you uh, become a patron, you will automatically be entered into giveaways at any tier level. It doesn't matter how much you're pledging. Uh, if I'm giving something away, you'll get a chance to win it. Or this current giveaway that ends on August 31st is the Inkeo Portable Power Station. It's a $130 value, and you can charge phones and camera batteries with it. It's actually really handy. And I kind of want one, but I'm giving this one away because I'm nice. And frankly, I needed a giveaway item because I don't have enough money to buy stuff like that. <laughs> it is until more of you guys become patrons, because I want to spend all that patron money on cool shit to talk about in videos and give away to you guys. I guess that's it. Follow me on Instagram. I never say that. I usually just show the Instagram thing, but check out my Instagram, because I take a lot of pretty pictures. Or at least I think I do.